In the next 24 hours, the shareholders of Lonman PLC will take a vote that will decide the fate of the world's third largest platinum producer. They'll be offered a 94% discount as part of a 400 million US dollar rebuilding plan for Lonman that has been there for 106 years. Forbes Africa's Aviwa Ntila has more for us. Miners waiting to go on shift at Lonman's Marikana Platinum Mine in northwest South Africa. If the shareholders' vote goes the wrong way, there could soon be no shifts for them to wait for. Few here appear to know what is happening with the company they work for. This situation is deeply saddening, but there's nothing we can do because Lonman is robbing us. That's what made us strike because our salaries were too little. We couldn't even take our children to school with it. Even the way they are closing the mine is unlawful because we still have problems. We have responsibilities and we don't know what to do. It's painful. It's going to affect us a lot because Lonmin supports many communities and school kids. In the villages, people have depended on Lonmin in many ways. We as men support our wives. If we lose our jobs, we won't be able to do that. This is Rustenburg. As the shareholders of Lonman PLC vote on the future of the company at its London headquarters, thousands of miles away, this is where the decision will be felt the most. 37,000 workers could be unemployed here in Marikana should the shareholders reject the $400 million stock sale that the company desperately needs. This could be the end of Lonman and the end of the jobs for many breadwinners. The Rustenburg economy has been rattled before. Just last year, there was a five-month-long platinum strike that cost over $1 billion in revenue. The longest and most expensive mining strike in South African history. How will the platinum belt survive another blow? Johnny Kamara has been running a supermarket in Rustenburg for three years. Three of the toughest years the platinum industry has ever suffered. If the mine closes, we, we have to close as well. I mean, without the mine, we cannot carry on with business. There won't be no business at all. The business was right from when you open up to now. Just you had a bit of uh, down with the business last year when there was a strike here in the mine. The business you had a bit of an effect. Uh, you dropped a bit, but now it's coming back to normal. Trouble has been brewing around Lonman for years, including the killing of mine workers in 2012 at Marikana. Costs have risen and the platinum price has fallen 58% since 2012. It's been a disastrous couple of years. I mean, I think everybody knows the industry context has not been good. We've had declining platinum prices. We've had electricity-related shortages. And we've had severely uh, tumultuous labor and management tussles. And then, of course, to add, for Lonman anyway, the uh, crisis and disaster at Marikana and so on some years ago. So you put all of that together, you've got declining profitability, weak demand for platinum, companies' financial circumstances deteriorated sharply. They hit their debt covenants, which of course then meant that they had to raise additional capital. And with the share price so low, it just feels like the company is fighting a rearguard action. Even Lonman CEO Ben Magara admits that the company is burnt money. I could reflect on quite a bit, but um, in the boom times around 2004, 2005, Lonmin went and bought barren ground in the northern uh, province there around the Platte Reef, a, a property called Akanani. Akanani was bought for m almost a billion dollars. Today in our books, it's worth zero. So that billion dollars went down the drain. Lonmin embarked on a serious mechanization program in this hard rock narrow and tabular deposit, which no one can cut effectively today. We wasted a billion, a further billion dollars in that process of trying to mechanize. To try to reverse all those challenges has needed even more money to do that. Just part of a bleak picture that has seen Lomond's share price plummet from $8 in December 2012 to just 16 cents. This will worry some of Lomond's major shareholders who will decide the fate of the company. They include Kachiso Asset Management, Public Investment Corporation and Old Mutual Investment Group. Lonman believes they should take a leap of faith by voting yes. I think one has to take heart at the fact that this is not 
the best thing to do. This is the last resort. Our investors have to see value in the company. If I am putting my money in this company, I am going to follow my rights because if I look at the future, the company is worth 1.6 billion and the market cap is at 100 million. The value opportunity, even after the market, if even after the four rights issue, the enlarged share capital will be 500 million. It's a lot less than the value opportunity to 1.6 billion. So really, I think with a good mind and good facts on the table, this is the rights issue to follow and this is the rights issue to vote yes on the 19th. A lifeline for Lonman came earlier this week when the Public Investment Corporation, which owns just over 7% shares in Lonman, pledged their willingness to take up as much as 25% of Lonman, giving them a 32% stake. Could shareholders save Lonman? Shareholders are tired, you know, they're tired. They haven't really had a great feeling with regard to the management team and its uh, role over the recent years. Of course, many of those management figures are now no longer with the company. But basically the company is saying to its shareholders you have to put money in and that's to save the company. The problem of course is that shareholders have been voting with their feet in recent days, selling out of the company, deciding they don't actually want to be involved at all. So who knows? I suspect the shareholder approval will be obtained at the meeting because what other option is there? You know, what are you going to do? Shut it down right now? Well, no. The idea is that it has to proceed with the rights issue. My only question is who is going to stand up and put that capital in? Probably a few really, uh, you know, long-suffering shareholders like the PIC, like a couple of bigger, you know, global investors who like the precious metals environment. The end of Lonman? Soon we'll know. The people living off the mining here in Rustenburg in the northwest province want the company to stay open. They hope the shareholders, far away in London, feel the same. Aviwem Dila, CNBC Africa, Marikana.